So in lesson 18, we're going to be focusing on introducing the idea of ANCOVA, which is just adding a covariate or continuous factor to our ANOVA. Specific, specifically, in this lesson, we're going to use an example to help motivate why and when we would use an ANCOVA um, type of analysis. Okay, so let's talk about our motivating example, which we'll be carrying throughout this entire lesson, which is the peanut yield example. So researchers want to carry out an experiment to study the effect of three fertilizers on the yield of individual peanut plants. 30 plants are available for this experiment, to which the assignment of the fertilizers is made accordingly to a randomized complete design. After a suitable period of time, the yield of each of the plants is measured. When applying the fertilizer, researchers measured and recorded the starting height of each plant. This information, the height, is thought to have an association with the yield and is incorporated in the analysis. And so our question right now that we're going to try and ask ourselves is, how do we incorporate heights of our plants into our analysis? Remember, our heights are a continuous variable. So up until this point, we would probably try to treat it as a blocking factor. In which we would maybe try to divide the plants up based on the group heights and then randomly assign the fertilizer within the height groups, similar to carrying out a randomized complete block design or a generalized randomized complete block design. Remember, this is when we have replicates. The only issue with taking this approach is that it's very difficult to judge the cutoffs for the different height groups. So what do we consider small? What do we consider medium height? What do we consider large height or tall height? Um, so that's one difficulty of taking a continuous factor and turning it into a discrete factor, which would be what we would do when we break it up into groups. Another issue is that maybe some groups wouldn't have enough plants in them. Um, this makes sense because we can't control the starting height of plants. Um, if you do know how to control the starting height of plants, that'd be very interesting to learn about. But typically, from my knowledge, you can't. So. You can't all control how many plants are in each group. And so this isn't an efficient way to use our height measurements. And so we wouldn't want to take this randomized complete block or RCBD um, design with our height measurements. A better approach and a more efficient way to incorporate height into the model is as a covariate. Okay, so a covariate is a quantitative variable that describes the difference in the experimental units or the experimental conditions. Um, it can be incorporated in any design of experiments. Um, experiments can have multiple covariates. In our class, I'm more focused on us just understanding the concept. So we're gonna keep it very basic or we're gonna focus on a completely randomized design with only one covariate, okay? Now, when we do this, we're going to be using an analysis, hopefully to no surprise, called an ANCOVA, or analysis of covariance. And this is an analysis of an experiment that is, uses the relationship between the response and covariates to reduce the error term variability and make comparisons between the treatment effect more powerful. So this, the idea of analysis of covariance is very similar to when we incorporated blocks in the randomized complete block design or the GRCBD. The idea when we were incorporating blocking factors into the analysis was to explain some systematic variability or what was going on to then help us use that to understand the effect of the treatment and reduce some of that background noise or that error variability. So the same ideas here on why we are introducing that covariate, okay? Um, now we need to understand kind of the choice of our covariates. So when we're incorporating covariates in the model, 
we first believe that it's at least going to affect the response. Um, if it doesn't, a simpler model without the covariate is preferred. Um, hopefully this is kind of intuitive. We don't wanna just start adding random covariates if we don't think they're actually gonna affect our response. Second, we don't want our covariate to confound with our treatments. And what I mean by that, and what I mean by confounding, not just that, what I mean by um, confounded is that We are not sure if the covariate's impacting the response or if the treatment effect is impacting the response. So if a covariate is confounded with the treatment, then the ANCOVA analysis may result in failure to detect that the treatment of detect that a treatment effect that we're looking for, because we already have a covariate in the model that's explaining the same thing. We're gonna talk about this through an example using our plots down here momentarily. Um, okay, actually, we'll just do that right now. So in order to check if a covariate is confounded with, a, with our treatment, we wanna look at a scatter plot called the symbolic scatter plot. And all that's really saying is that we plot our X on the x-axis or our covariate and then our response on the y and then our symbols are related to that treatment or that factor and so in this case we can see that our three treatments range from negative 15 to roughly 35. there isn't a distinct separation okay and this is when the covariates are not confounded. And it's okay to do an analysis of covariance on this type of data set. Now, if we look to our right, this is an example where our covariate is confounded with our treatment. What you notice is that our treatment one is in the range of negative two or not negative 0.2 to 0.4 and then our other treatment is in the range of 0.5 to 0.8 and so we don't know if it's the covariate that's impacting this or the treatment because they are separated and so it would be really hard to understand if is it our covariate or our X impacting the response or is it the treatment? Okay, so typically what you wanna look at in a symbolic scatter plot to give yourself the go ahead or not go ahead of using ANCOVA is you wanna make sure that the treatments are almost kind of lined up in the same range uh, on the X axis and not broken up like this. Okay, so this is just a quick intro to ANCOVA slash some motivation. Hopefully you guys noticed that ANCOVA is similar to a randomized complete block design, but now our quote unquote block is a covariate because we have a continuous factor. We can also have more than one covariate in our analysis so that we can explain more of what's going on. Um, but remember, similar to our block, our covariate isn't of what's interest to us. It's our treatment and whether our treatments differ. That is what is of interest to us. With that, in our next video, we'll talk about the co um, analysis of covariance statistical model and ANOVA table.